Patrick Goddard. I'm a comic book artist based in South Wales in the UK. Uh, I've been drawing comics for about 20 plus years, uh, mainly for 2000 AD, but I've done work on other publications as well. Uh, I do other illustration work as well, but for the most part, I am just a comic book artist, which I love doing. <music> The first comics I remember getting, I must have been about four, possibly even younger. I had an older, I've got an older brother who's sort of well into comics anyway, so he was getting things like Spider-Man Weekly. But I think my first comic was Star Wars Weekly, so that film came out and kind of changed everything imagination-wise for me as a child. So uh, I remember getting the comic and I had all like black and white uh, reprints of the American stuff. and. I don't know, I was just, I was completely sold in the whole world that just fed your imagination. And I sort of, from then, I just enjoyed the escapism of comics. It sort of helped me read as well, a lot more at that age. Uh, and then sort of, I just bought more and more comics and then it didn't stop. To begin with, all my comics used to come from my parents. So they used to just get them from the local news agent. So it was like uh, the Marvel reprints, like Spider-Man, Star Wars. I used to get Battle Action Force then because I was I was completely sold on toys at the time. So I could play with my figures, playing stories, read about it in the comics, and then kind of think of my own stories as well. Uh, I think I discovered my main comic shop, which I still visit today, uh, Cardiff Comics, in about 85. So I started picking up like American comics then. Uh, and so I was picking up like the American monthlies, which you, you'd only ever see in British news agents every now and again so you can never get two issues in a row uh, but once I started going I started ordering comics then spending all my pocket money and that was it and uh, I was an addict and hooked. I remember my first strip I ever did I sort of uh, I was sending sort of samples when I left our college to, but to America but this was before the internet so I used to have to send photocopies of my samples to a submissions editor in America and used to get like replies back and say, oh, really well done. Uh, you got some potential, blah, blah, blah. Try this out. And he gave you some sample scripts to work on. Didn't really get anywhere, but some sort of editors saw my work and, you know, they were really quite positive about it. I saw, I picked up a few issues of 2000 AD then in the late 90s. And I could see they were sort of moving away from the painterly artwork that they sort of were doing a lot at the time. Things like Simon Fraser, uh, Frank Quitely. So I thought, oh, they're a bit more pen and ink, which is what I was pretty much uh, my art style is. And so I thought I'd give 2008 a go. And lo and behold, I sort of got in on my first attempt. So I sent my Judge Dredd sample off. Uh, the editor really liked it. And Dave Bishop, who's the editor, he's, uh, he gave me a sample script. And then I drew that and he was happy. And he gave me a, a Dan Abnett script of Sinister Dexter. And here's a page of my very first strip. Paper's gone a little bit yellow because it's about 23 years old. 
and this was a sinister dexter strip called lucky and, and that was my first thing that featured a, i think about the year 2000 and 2000 ad uh, i did a couple of more sinister dexters i think about my fourth job i did judge dread for the magazine then so that was a big deal and then uh, it just continued from there The first time I saw my, my work published was, you know, to say a buzz is an understatement. It, it was just amazing to see because being a comic fan your whole life, you thought, I like to draw comics, but you never quite know if you were going to do it. Because I, I tried other things before I sort of got into comics, but they didn't really work out. So I thought, I love comics, give them a go. And once you've had that physical copy in your hands, it, it is such a great feeling and I still get it now, you know, uh, I know people read comics digitally these days, but I still love having the physical, physical copies that uh, are sent to me and uh, to see it in print and just to flick through, it just reminds you of, of why you do it in the first place. The emergence of AI in sort of recent months, not even years now, you know, we've just seen the progress that's happened. Uh, it's it's a threat to a certain degree in a lot of art styles, a lot of art fields, sorry. Uh, I've had a friend who sort of used to do like prelims for sort of advertising for photographers and graphic designers, but then he was being, he's just been given an AI prelim to work from 
and they said, oh, don't worry, your job's safe. And he knows it's not. So in certain fields, I think it's it's quite threatening uh, that he could be replaced in that way. Comics, I think, is such a complex art style. I think it's probably the hardest illustration work out there. I've done other bits and bobs, and comics by far is the, the hardest thing to do. You need to know a bit of everything, architecture, fashion design, storytelling, cinematography. You just need to know a bit of everything. Uh, so I think, but AI will get there eventually, worryingly. Uh, but at the moment, I think comics are fairly safe-ish. But I do think some of the AI stuff is really clever. And you can see how some of the sort of concept designers can incorporate it into their work and make their work even better. But I think there's a lot of misuse of it at the moment where I think, you know, I don't know, it's, it's strange. They sort of, they think artists are gatekeepers to some sort of industry that nobody can sort of get in on. And it's not really that. We just practice and we sort of all our lives worked at it. It hasn't, it's not easy uh, and typing a couple of words in to produce an amazing 3D graphic of something isn't quite the same. And I don't know how you can take ownership in the same way. Uh, you know, it's, it's fine for some to sort of, who've never been able to draw and they feel like it's a, an avenue they can explore, but it's not the same. Uh, for me personally anyway, but it's, and for the most part, it's, what's it, artistic plagiarism, I think I've, I've seen this called, because it's not creating anything, it's just taking everybody's billions of images from across the internet and mould it into something else. So that's images stolen from other artists, photographers, all, of, all other kind of creators. So uh, it's... It's not an area I enjoy looking at, but it's it's around to stay, unfortunately.